The Higher Life, the era of the word revolution, with Apostle Dr. David Kunobua and Pastor Rita Bella. God Almighty, the strong and blessed one, great Jehovah, I am, I am. Hello viewers, welcome to the era of the word revolution. My name is Pastor Rita Bella Kunobua and I'm going to be sharing about spiritual surrogacy versus motherhood. I want you to pick out the best in this message about the authentic art of motherhood. What is motherhood? So that you can get the best direction on how to be the best mother in our generation. May God richly bless you. Enjoy the program. So I'm going to be speaking from the subject spiritual surrogates spiritual surrogates versus motherhood or mother the true art of motherhood but it's spiritual surrogates versus motherhood what is surrogacy what is a surrogate who is a surrogate praise the name of the living god so in modern day church we have so many spiritual surrogates hallelujah that is why I have chosen this topic. It's very, very important. There are many, many spiritual surrogates. Hallelujah. Um, and there's the true authentic art of motherhood. So some, we have so many people who are surrogates. Hallelujah. They carry, not everybody who brings forth a baby is a mother. Nowadays, the modern day language, if it was a man, they say he's a sperm donor. That means... He helped in the bringing forth of that baby, but relinquished his parental rights. So just like we have sperm donors, when it comes to motherhood, we have spiritual surrogates. Praise the name of the living God. They carried the child. But I want to ask everybody in the church, what is motherhood? What is motherhood? It's bringing forth and nurturing. Because what consists of a mother is not just popping babies. You have to nurture them. You have to nurture them. When you fail to nurture your, mother, your, your children, it means you have relinquished your parental rights. And therefore you are a surrogate. A surrogate is somebody who carries a baby on behalf of another. So since you give up your responsibilities as a mother, you become a surrogate. Nevertheless, you pop that baby out. Yes, some, uh, let me tell you something. There are two types of surrogates. Hallelujah. There are two types of surrogates. There's what they call a traditional surrogate. Hallelujah. That one will carry the baby. And according to the American law, the name of that woman will be registered as the birth mother on the birth certificate. But then... It is also written somewhere that she was carrying it for somebody else. Praise the name of the living God. Now, now, now they relinquish, such a mother relinquishes their rights at birth. So when they deliver the baby, they hand it over to somebody else. That is what has been happening in the, in the realm of the spirit and in modern day church. Hallelujah. So what am I saying? There's another type of a surrogate. It's called a gestational. Gestational surrogate. Those of you who are in the medical field in this country, you can resonate with what I'm saying. So a gestational surrogate will carry a child, but totally for somebody else. Why? Because the egg is not hers, and also it, they just fertilize the egg and everything, and they inseminated it into them. So she has nothing to do with that baby. It's not, it's not her DNA, but she's carrying it because she has a womb. Praise the name of the living God. So there's a lot of spiritual surrogacy. And when they bring forth that baby, that baby, they also relinquish their rights. Hallelujah. I'm talking about spiritual surrogacy in modern day church. So are there surrogates according to what I said in modern day church? Hallelujah. So not everybody who carries the name mother has the responsibility of motherhood. So when you bring forth and you do not nurture, you are not a true art of a mother.
Hallelujah. But when you mother what you have brought forth and nurture it and carry it into its destiny, then you are a true mother or an authentic mother. Now, there are many things that are happening with spiritual babies in the modern day church. Many, many things. Hallelujah. Imagine some people are dying in ministry. Why? Because a mother is supposed to nurture the child. Hallelujah. A child is supposed to feed, hallelujah, on the mother. You are supposed to feed on the mother. The minute a child is out of the womb, the next thing they want is a breast. The minute you birthed your ministry, the next thing you needed was a breast. Why does a person, why, does, why do all children, why do all infants need a breast to survive? Why? It is because, listen, it is because all the nutrients they need to make it in, into this world has been put by God into what they call the mother's breast. Praise the name of the living God. I am going somewhere. So the minute a baby cries and is out of the womb, the next thing they start, they start to suck around. This is not just in the physical, but in the spirit it is, is real and it also applies in the realm of the spirit. So some mothers are birth children, but they don't nurture them. And what happens to a child if you give birth to them and you don't breastfeed them? What next? They starve of hunger and most of them die. Praise the name of the living God. They do what? They die. They starve and die. Not because God did not give them food, but because sometimes the mothers don't want to do their job. Yeah, you know. Because especially mothers who become mothers by default. Mm. I know even in ministry that people who have become mothers by default. Hallelujah. They didn't plan on becoming a pastor's wife. <laughs> they didn't see that coming. That is why we have so many pastor's wives who are like models in the ministry more than mentoring people. To them, it's, it, it, the, the job is a dress code. The role is a dress code. It's about the shoe, hallelujah. There's a lady who came from England one time and she told me, if I were you, hello? She was a pastor's wife. And she told me, if I were you, hello? hello? I would wear 10 inch heels. And wear all the, she was telling me how she would dress. So it's not about the dress code. It is about responsibility. Tell your neighbor it's responsibility. That is why some pastor's wives, they on the pulpit. Not every pastor's wife is a woman of God. Not every pastor's wife is a woman of God. I want that to sink in. Maybe the man is a man of God, but not every pastor's wife is. <laughs> Praise the name of the living God. That is hard stuff, but I'm going to say it. Yeah. That is why to them, the position is about fashionistic, being fashionistic, wearing the best lipstick, the best perfume, the biggest hat. Hallelujah. Amen. But to me, it is responsibility. I don't know about you, but to me, it is responsibility. I have to nurture souls into the kingdom. I have to nurture souls into destiny. Amen. That is why every time they take a vacation, they want to show you, I'm now in Canada. I'm now in Istanbul. They are posting all the time. They post more than they preach. They keep on posting. I've checked in in Marriott. Marriott Marquis. But when did they last post a scripture? When did they last post an encouragement? When did they last speak sense into your life? A mother is supposed to nurture that which they bring forth. Do not be deceived. I'm telling you the true art of motherhood. Some people are surrogates. It's high time you identify. By the time I'm done preaching, you'll identify whether some of you had surrogates or mothers. Praise the name of the living God. This is hard stuff. But the church has to learn. So some people, God has given them the responsibility. But some are not doing it very well. Hallelujah. Motherhood is responsibility. You have to nurture people. You have to nurture the children that God has brought through you into their destiny and into their calling. And we are going to see that in a whole lot in today's discussion. Praise the name of the living God. So you find that some children, when they come forth, when they come forth, something happens. The mother doesn't breastfeed them. 
and in, because they are not breastfed, they have a character crisis. Why? Because they lack certain nutrients. They lack certain attributes. Praise the name of the living God. Why? Because they were not breastfed. Ask your neighbor, were you breastfed? I believe you were because if you were not breastfed, you wouldn't be here. The babies that don't breastfeed, hallelujah, they don't make it. They die. And then we have mothers who die in the labor ward. We have mothers who die in the labor ward. They don't make it out of the labor ward. And because the mothers don't make it out of the labor ward, even the infant doesn't survive many times. One time, my father had twins. Hallelujah. My father had twins. And the wife didn't make it. Hallelujah. The wife did not make it. So in so, because the wife didn't make it, one of the twins also didn't make it. So some of you, if your mother doesn't make it out of the labor ward, you cannot make it into destiny. You also go except a few that are preserved by the grace of God. That is why when a mother dies, a few days later the infant also will die. Why? Because the infant is lacking something. She is lacking the warmth. Is lacking the warmth of a mother. I want us to go to the book of Psalms. Everybody, the book of Psalms, 66 verse 13. I'll go into thy house with burnt offerings. Uh, oh. Is that the scripture? No, it's Isaiah 66, 13. I'm sorry. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 13. The Bible says, As one whom his mother comforteth, so I will comfort you, and I will be comforted. You, you, ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. So sometimes when babies don't receive the comfort of a mother, something happens. They die. They die prematurely. So we've been seeing a lot of spiritual death in, the, in modern day churches. Why? Because of certain things that are happening. Certain catastrophes that some of them that I've already discussed this morning. Hallelujah. And then we have also a crisis on the other hand. Somebody has brought forth the baby in ministry or take it as you want it and this is a mother and you're supposed to breastfeed the child but the child you're breastfeeding from your child i mean we want to bring back sense in the kingdom of god when a child comes forth you the mother you're supposed to breastfeed the child but in the church we have we have mothers who are breastfeeding their children brought from their children they are sucking the breast of their children instead of their children sucking their breast. Would such a child survive? Would such a ministry survive? It cannot survive. It cannot make it. So a mother has the capability to feed a baby, but the baby has no capability to feed a mother. Maybe in the latter stages of life. In this sense, I'm speaking to people that God is raising up as spiritual mothers. People who are supposed to nurture people in ministry. Make sure you don't suck the breast of your children prematurely. The only time you have to suck the breast of your children, Elder Nick, Brother Nick, is when Zion is about 40 years old. Not when she is two days old. Not even when she's one year old. It is impermissible. Praise the name of the living God. It is impermissible. You're supposed to breastfeed your children. Mothers take care of their children. But surrogates don't take care of their children. They relinquish responsibility at birth. So are you a mother or you are a surrogate? So a surrogate is in the thing for what she can get. A surrogate is in this thing for what she can get. That is why nowadays Hollywood celebrities don't want to carry pregnancies. They pay someone to do it for them. Praise the name of the living God. They pay someone to do what? To carry the child for them. And when the child is born, they give you 20,000. 
Why? Because you did the job of surrogacy. Hello? Are you paying somebody else to do what God has called you to do? Hello? Are you paying somebody else to nurture what God has given you? That means you're also a spiritual surrogate. But I want to give you the true art of motherhood. The true art of motherhood. Number one, Isaiah 66 says that a mother is a comforter. A true mother is a comforter. Tell your neighbor, a true mother is a comforter. We must comfort our children. Our children need our comfort. I grew up in Africa where mothers were, were used to saying all sorts of mean things to their children. And those of you who have been raised by immigrant mothers and they say mean things to you, just know that's how we were raised. And we are sorry, that's the only best thing we know. That's the best way we know how to raise a child. We are not mean. Praise the name of the living God. I'm speaking to the new generation. Hallelujah. Yeah, because let me tell you something. My daughter last night, I happened to push her to tell her, go to bed. And she cried so hard and she said, Mommy, you pushed me. Say sorry. <laughs> and I wanted to be so adamant like all the African parents and say, no, I didn't push you. She said, yes, Mommy, you pushed me. Say sorry. <laughs> and that was Janelle, by the way. That was, that was my little baby. And she kept on crying and she, she insisted, Mommy, you need to say sorry. But those of you who grew up where I grew up, you know a parent doesn't say sorry. Wow. <laughs> if I'm lying, put up your hands. How many times has your parents, if you have an African parent, how many times have they apologized to you? They are never wrong. Is it so with the American parents? Let me speak to all mothers who come from my background. Who come from my background. Are there mothers who come from my background? Yes. They even have a phrase, Omzad de Tasovia. Praise the name of the living God. They have a phrase, a parent does not do wrong. The parent is always right. But is that true? No. That takes away the idea of humanity. Because the Bible, uh, no, the Englishman says mistake is, mistakes are to human. But when you say a parent doesn't commit wrong, or a parent does not make a mistake, it, it makes a parent inhuman. Hello? So let me tell you something. This little girl, she's only three years old. She told me, Mommy, you pushed me. And you got to say sorry. <laughs> Mommy, say sorry. Praise the Lord. I'm coming. The story ain't over yet. Praise the Lord. So she kept on crying. And she said, Mommy, you have to say sorry. This was just last night. And you know what? Because I wanted her to keep quiet. And because I wanted to go to bed, I said, okay, Jenny, I'm sorry. And guess what? In immediately, she was quiet. <laughs> Praise the name of the living God. You know, what's so funny is sometimes even the mother knows that I am wrong, but because of that proverb in Africa, because of that proverb, that ungodly proverb, yeah, and the ego, and the fear of shame. Let me tell you something. If you apologize, it doesn't make you a less of a mother. You still remain a mother. I apologized last night, and I'm still a mother. And guess what? She forgot all about it. That's the beauty of it. So some parents, we need to bring back peace in our families. You're the source of the confusion. It's not a demon. There is no demon in your house. You are the source of the confusion. You are the source of the division and the conflicts in the lives of your children. Why? Because you don't have the true art of motherhood. Hello? You show Jacob that I love Jacob more than Esau. 
so that you even still it's so blessing for Jacob and you think these kids are not seeing they are not naive they can see it they can see the favoritism they can see all the bureaucracies they can see all your weaknesses and guess what behind the scene when they are gossiping they are saying she is not a good mother and guess what your children could be right sometimes it's our mistakes who help us realize exactly who we are our critics Hallelujah. Our critics help us to check who we are. Yeah. Someone can say you're very arrogant. Don't just say, I'm not arrogant. Take the, you know, don't speak to them like that. Go in the mirror and check yourself very well. Just examine yourself. The Bible doesn't say don't examine yourself. The Bible says examine yourself. So sometimes we are so adamant to accept our mistakes just because we are mothers. Let me tell you something. Apologizing doesn't make you any less of a mother. Just like you can apologize to your boss, you can apologize to your workmates, to your churchmates, even your children. Sometimes we do them wrong. It is okay to apologize. It doesn't make you any less of a mother. Actually, a mother who apologizes is a good mother. You're teaching your children that you should be humble, that when you make a mistake, you should not be adamant to apologize just because you're the CEO. Hello. They're talking about the authentic art of motherhood. Surrogacy versus motherhood. Hallelujah. So children of God, the true art of motherhood is comfort your children. Even the Bible forbids us to provoke our children. So when you provoke them and you're so adamant not to say sorry, because let me tell you something, we have so many t teenage children running out of their homes. They are running out of their homes. They're saying, I can't wait until I'm 18 and I get out of this house. Check your art of motherhood. At one point or another, we all ought to examine ourselves. And I want to submit to everybody that a parent can do wrong. A parent makes mistakes. How many of you, your parents, your mother has made mistakes before? They made a mistake. <laughs> now, if you're a child, clap your hands to Jesus. Yeah. Now, some parents are like, ah, 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 ah. Pastor, don't talk to me because you know what? Nobody corrects a mother according to the African proverbs but i want those i want to tell you those proverbs are ungodly hello those proverbs are ungodly if you learn to rectify your errors as a parent or as a mother peace and harmony shall come back to your house peace and harmony shall come back to your house unity shall come back within your children you are the source of the confusion among your children hello you buy the other one a car and when it's this one stand, you don't buy. And you think they are blind. Hello? Rachel went to the extent of stealing Esau's blessing for Jacob. What does that show you? That even mothers have favorites. But thank God he has no favorites. God has no favorites. But mothers can have favorites. Anybody who wants God to make you his favorite, make him his favorite too. Make, make yourself your, his favorite too. Because with God, it has to be two-way. Hello? With God, it has to be two-way. Tell your neighbor, with God, it has to be two-way. So it's not that God has favored Pastor Bella. But let me tell you something. I made my God a priority since I was just a teenager. But you, you're just beginning to make him a priority. And you're 37. For, for the, for, since I was a teenager, he was my number one. You, you're just still learning how to make him your number one. Are we supposed to be at the, on the same page and on the same level? No. But let me tell you something. It's not too late to start making God your number one. Make him your number one. Make him your priority. Somebody say he is my priority. Let me tell you something about me. My God is my heartbeat. My husband is not my heartbeat. Jesus is my heartbeat. Amen. The minute he's out of this heart, it won't beat again. Hello? So some of you, you need to make Jesus Christ your heartbeat. 
Yeah, the other, you remember the last time you met the other sister, your heart, she broke your heart. Even you, you, you went to another and they broke your heart. Why? Because let me tell you something. You're causing sisters to occupy the place that only God can occupy. Every man has a void in their lives. And only God can fill that void. Whenever you make your wife, your husband fill that void, guess what? God is a jealousy. God is going to strike you. Even if it was meant to be. Even if it was meant to be. He will undo it. Can I show it to you? Deuteronomy 32, 18. Deuteronomy 32, 18, everybody. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 18. The Bible says, Of the rock that, that, that begot thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. So even in God there is a mother. Even in God there is a mother. The first mother wasn't Eve. The first mother is God. In God there is a mother. The Bible says, of the rock that begot thee, the rock that birthed thee, you forgot that rock, and thou art unmindful, and thou hast forgotten God that formed thee. Can we continue? And when the Lord saw it, he abode them because of provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see that their end shall be, for they are very forward generation children whom is no faith. They have moved me to church. Read that one. Uh -uh. Do we all know how to read English? Okay, one, two, three. Now the Bible says when they forgot God, they provoked him to jealousy. When you put your children before God, put them in the place where God should be sitting, put them in the throne that God should be occupying, something is going to happen and this thing is not going to be good. The Bible says he was provoked to jealousy. So when you even place your children where God should be sitting in your life and make your children a priority, mothers, take heed. God can even remove them from you. I know of a Randy's woman. She prayed so many years like Hannah to get a child. Hallelujah. I'm not scaring you. I'm just giving you the true heart of a mother. Hallelujah. So she prayed to God. God, please bless me with a child. And some of you don't have children because you are barren. But even God knows, should I give you children, they will take my place in your life. So this woman, when she conceived and brought forth her child, she stopped going to church. And every time they asked her, why aren't you going to church? You know I have to take care of this baby. You know I'm feeding my baby. I'm taking care of the baby. Praise the name of the living God. And guess what? God took the child. And that was her one and only child. So she began to weep and mourn. She began to weep and mourn. And she said, God, why did you do this? Why did God revealed it very clearly to all the leadership in the church. It's because she made the baby a priority. And God was no longer a priority. And guess whatever will stand in God's way for you to serve him, he will remove it. Even if it is your husband, even if it is your, he will remove it. He doesn't care. Why? Because he has to be number one. Tell your neighbor he has to be number one. Do you know why God blessed Hannah with many more children? I want you to open the book of 1 Samuel 126. 1 Samuel 126, everybody. Samuel 126, everybody. And she said, Oh my Lord, as your soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has given me my petition, which I asked him. Therefore, I have also lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth. 
He shall be lent to the Lord and he worshiped the Lord there. And Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted. The Lord, my, my horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies. Because I rejoice in thy salvation. So when Hannah got her breakthrough, she did not stay away from the house of God. She did not stay away from the presence of God. She did not stay. She did not keep her children even away from God. Some of you, God has blessed you with children and you're busy keeping them away from God. I want every mother to understand that we are just custodians of these children. We are just custodians. God has just entrusted them with you. He could have given them to anybody he wanted. Praise the name of the living God. So you see, the Bible says that Hannah took this child back to the Lord. Have you ever re presented your children back to God? Because we all get our children from. And that is the essence of dedication. When you receive a breakthrough, you have to dedicate it back to God. That is why God gave Hannah many more sons and daughters. Why? Because she honored the Lord. Even when she received what she had prayed for. Ask your neighbor, when did you last honor the Lord after receiving what you had prayed for? Nobody is asking. I guess nobody had me. Hallelujah. Because every time we come in the house of God and we are petitioning God for something. But as soon as we receive it, some of us don't even come back to say thank you. It's like the ten lepers. The Bible says he healed ten lepers. But only one came back to give thanks to God. What happened to the nine lepers? Did they not receive healing? Praise God. So we ought to always dedicate back what God has given unto us. Give it back to him. But every time you love it and you're hiding it away from him. No, my children can't go to overnight. My children can't go to, where did you get them? Where did they come from? You probably got your, your breakthrough from the overnight. And now you're telling my children, my breakthrough can't go to the overnight. Where it came from. Imagine how you feel. Hello? My children can't go. They're not going anywhere. You're hiding them from the one who gave them to you. Imagine parents how you'd feel. If you give your child an iPhone, but they're always hiding it from you. And they can't even call you on the iPhone you bought for them. They're always hiding it from you. And you are still paying for the iPhone, but they're hiding it. They say you cannot touch it, but you are the one who bought the iPhone. They say, Mama, can't touch it. Mama, you shouldn't touch it. You can't, can't. Let me tell you something. Your mama bought the iPhone. She got a right to, to touch it. And some of you who are even have the iPhones, the mama is still paying for the iPhone. Praise the name of the living God. So the art of motherhood. The art of motherhood. A true mother will put God first. A true mother will put God first. An unauthentic mother will carry their children into destiny. So Hannah, after receiving this child, she carried Samuel into destiny. If Hannah did not guide Samuel very well and gave him to Eli the priest in the temple, do you think we would have had a prophet called Samuel? His place of encounter was in the temple. Some mothers, the surrogates are taking mother away from where their children should encounter God. Samuel had to encounter God in the temple. However much Hannah loved Samuel, Hannah took Samuel back to God, took him back to temple. Why? Because his destiny was in the temple. There are, there are mothers who are sabotaging the destinies of their children. That is not the art of motherhood. The destiny of your children is in God, and you're keeping your children from God. You're going to church too much. You're praying too much. Let me tell you, it's not, there's no over praying you can do. It's only under praying that we can do. I've never seen God tell somebody that you have over prayed. If you find that scripture, please post it on Pastor Bella's WhatsApp. <laughs> There's nothing like over praying. When I was a teenager, my parents did not like me going to church, but today they celebrate it. They thank God for it. And quite frankly, if I hadn't given my life to Christ, probably I could have been dead. 
I could have been long gone. Hello? I could have been long gone. Many people that grew up with me, hallelujah, that shared beds with me, that shared a home with me, many of them, almost half are gone. Why? Because they were in the world. And they went partying. They went partying. And as they went partying, they acquired HIV. And today, they are history. And here I am standing as I was running into the presence of God. I was taking refuge in God. He was preserving me. He was protecting me. And now I am still here. So a good mother will lead, carry their children into destiny. Don't keep your children outside of God. Keep them in God. If they want to go to church every day, you should be very happy and say, you want to go to church? Hallelujah. I'll give you gas. Give them gas. Where are you going to church? Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. If your children are going to church, you are blessed in this generation in the United States of America. And they are not going to strip clubs. They are going to church. I have a friend, and she lives close by me. She told me one day that if I was going to do all those crazy things in the world, I would be at peace with my family. But they have a problem with me just because I say I'm going to church. They jeer me. They don't greet me. They don't say hello to me. What do you think that is? The devil is never happy when you're going to the house of God. And guess where the devil lives? He lives in some of your relatives, neighbors, and housemates. Yeah, they'd rather have you go to the strip club than you go into the church. They'd rather have you go to the beach on Sunday than go to the church. Why, why do you think they are not interested in keeping you away from the beach, but they are interested in keeping you away from the house of God? That means that there is something special in the house of God that the enemy wants to keep you away from. But tell your neighbor, I am not leaving the house of God. Praise the Lord. We shall not leave the house of God. A mother... And you are okay with your child at least going to a bar, but not to the church. Let them drink themselves stupid, but they should not go to the house of God. No, you are possessed of a demon. And you are not an authentic mother. And that's not the true art of motherhood. A good mother carries their child into destiny. A good mother, I say the good mother carries their child into their calling and into their destiny. They support them and they push them forward. They say, Josephine, go forward. Sing for Jesus. Worship Jesus. Amen. God bless these mothers. <laughs> they are taking rebukes of blessing. <laughs> Praise the name of the living God. Amen. So you know what? A good mother, you carry your children into destiny. You don't pull them out of destiny. You don't pull them out of destiny. You don't pull them out of their calling. God is telling them, go this way. And you are saying, no, me as a mother, you are a mother, but you don't own them. They are gods. Your children are for God. So when God says they should take this direction, be in alignment, be in sync. Tell your neighbor, be in sync with the will of God concerning your children. I must be in sync with the, with the will of God. Concerning my children. When God tells them at every day at five they should be praying, you should not say they are too young, they should be sleeping. Then you're working against God's will for the lives of your children. So the true art of motherhood, the true art of motherhood, you have to be in sync with the will of God for your children. So Hannah was in sync with the will of God for Samuel. You can imagine how many Samuels we have missed out on in this generation just because daddy refused you to go to church. Daddy refused you to be dedicated. Daddy refused you to fast. It's not about daddy and mommy. It's about destiny. It's about calling. Thank God you are the, you, you, you are the airport. Women, mothers, we are airports that God can use to cause babies to land in the earth realm. We are airports. Just because God used you to be an airport, don't become a controlling spirit. Hello, I'm speaking truth. Hello, the true art of motherhood. Don't, don't, don't let your children, don't, breast, don't, 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 don't breastfeed from your children. Let your children breastfeed from you. 
Some spiritual children are dying. I want mentorship and they begin to milk you like crazy. By the time you leave, you're malnourished. <laughs> By the time you don't even have any life or any trust in any man or woman of God. Now I'm speaking in the aspect of spiritual motherhood. Let me tell you, so many people are carrying seeds of destiny, but they have no mothers to stand with them. Because let me tell you something. As, 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 listen, what, what is going to happen? If an infant, if the mother who is supposed to breastfeed an infant begins to breastfeed from the infant, the infant begins to die. But the, the, the mother grows obese. Because even the nutrients that could have gone to the baby, they've gone to them. Hello? So we have people who call themselves, I'm, I'm a giant, I am big. But who have you raised as a mother in Zion? Who have you raised? You're becoming obese because it's all about you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The babies that you are supposed to nurture, they are dead. Listen, they are dead. Why? Because instead of feeding them, you are feeding from them. Even the little that they had, you have sucked it out of them. Why? Because it's about you. It's about your name. It's about your legacy. It shouldn't just be about your legacy. That is why so many people who are saying I'm gigantic in the spirit, they got no successor Amen. if they die today. That is why, because let me tell you, selfishness is a sin. Tell your neighbor, selfishness is a sin. There are people who press useless, foolish prayers. Useless, foolish prayers. May I be the only worshiper in Rivers of Life Assembly. I break that prayer. Let me tell you something. If you're going to be the only one, then at 90, we are going to be... Uh, you're, you're, you're 90 years old. Hallelujah. You should be sitting down and the young generation taking over. But because you are selfish, it was about you and just you. You grew obese. Everybody in the United States knows you, but you got no successor. Even at 90, you have to grow... Uh, even you got no voice. But because you never care to raise, to raise others. The poorest man that ever lives is one that lives without a successor. There are people who I see, they are holding TV programs and they are sleeping. You should be retired. Even in ministry, there is retirement age. Hello? Didn't Dr. David break it down? Don't deceive yourselves. Maurice Seruro retired. You'll also retire one day. Don't fight for pulpits. Let also others rise up. Let also others hold a microphone and you should be okay with it. Because one day you'll expire and young blood will have to take over. Like it or not. Let me tell you something. There is something that you cannot turn back and it's called a clock. It's called a clock. When it ticks forward, imagine. When it ticks forward, no matter what, you can't turn it back. So let other people also learn, train people, raise up people, teach people how to pray, nurture the people into destiny. A true mother will nurture people into destiny. There will not be jealousy. People have issues. Competition has become competition in the house of God. Ministry should not be about competition. It should be about complimenting. Hallelujah. It should be about complimenting and fulfilling one another. Because we are the body of Christ. You need me, I need you. And you need your neighbor. Every one of us is important to this body of Christ. Even the toe is important. Should they cut off your toe? You feel it, however small it is. Praise the name of the living God. So an authentic mother, the true art of motherhood, is you breastfeed the children. And they have to grow bigger than you because even Jesus said that I go away but greater works shall you do also. You should let others, a, a good mother would want their, their children to be greater than them. A good mother would want their children to go where they never went. But also we have people who don't have the art of motherhood who are kind of spiritual surrogates. Yeah, There was a man in Nigeria, he said that none of his children should ever be richer than him. Yes, and every time their children reached a certain level, they would crash right back until they had to go for deliverance. Hallelujah. And they had to cut down a tree that he was using to manipulate their wealth. 
And when the tree went down, the man died. That is not the true art of fatherhood or motherhood. Let me tell you, your seed should be greater than you. If my seed, if my seed doesn't grow bigger than me and greater than me, I, I am considered a failure. I am considered a failure. My seed has to be greater than me. The Bible says that Jesus said, I go, but greater work shall you do also. Even when Elijah disappeared, Elisha did many more miracles than Elijah. You should not be, be below your mother. You should be greater than your mother. I pray that my children will be well greater than me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody say, may my children be greater than me. May they achieve what I will not achieve. May they accomplish what I will not accomplish. May my children go far. That should be the desire of an authentic mother. But a mother who wants the children to be below, check your art of motherhood. You compete with them. You say, they should not be below me. They should not dress better than me. They should dress better than me. Yeah. Oh, they should. Sometimes they tell me, my kids, mommy, you're old school. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I agree. Because I can't, uh, I can't catch up with these modern day fashions of see-throughs and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> of one shoulder, you know. It's all out there. Hallelujah. So let me tell you something. Everybody, at one point, you will expire. But raise up somebody who will carry on the legacy. Raise up somebody who will carry on the legacy. Raise up somebody who will carry on the, the, the worship ministry. Raise up somebody who will carry on the walking rivers of life assembly. When I'm about 79, hallelujah, somebody should be, should be risen up so strong in the grace and in the anointing that is upon my life. Why? Because I'm not here to build myself. I'm here to build the kingdom. I'm not here to milk you. I'm here to, for you to breastfeed from me. And when you breastfeed, you grow big. You grow healthy. Hallelujah. Have you seen some babies who only take breast milk? Yeah. One day I'll discuss with you the power of, breast, or of the breast. The power of the breast. Hello. The power of a young child needs a breast. But even when people grow up, they still need a breast. <laughs> Hallelujah. When people grow up, they still need a breast. Only that it's not the same breast that you breastfed from when you are still an infant. Hallelujah. So I'll come back one day with that message. But what am I saying? We need to raise up children. We need to nurture children. A good mother nurtures Hallelujah. And as I conclude and get out of your way in a few minutes, let's go to Judges chapter 4. Judges chapter 4. Judges chapter 4. I want you to understand that mothers are also fighters. If you don't have the capability to fight for your children, then check your act of motherhood. In this country, if you touch some people's children, they'll go and talk to the teacher anyhow. They tell them, don't touch my child like that. Don't call my child names. Why? Because mothers are fighters. When you look at the Bible in Exodus chapter 2, the Bible says that jo jockey, jockey, jockey bed. Who knows jockey bed in the Bible? You don't know jockey bed? Jockey bed was the mother of Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Jockey bed. J-O-C-H-E-B-E-D. Jockey bed. He was the mother of Moses. But because he didn't want Moses to die, hallelujah, he didn't want Moses to do what? To die. He took Moses and put him on the river. He was fight, she was fighting for the life of her child. Jockey bed. She made sure that Moses, my Moses, will not die. Pharaoh is after every baby in the land, but I'm not giving up my Moses. I need my Moses. Let me risk and put my Moses on the river, but I'm not going to give up on my Moses. I'm not going to surrender my Moses to Pharaoh. Some of you mothers, you're surrendering your children to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh wants to just kill and assassinate the children. But Jockey Bed was a fighter. Tell your neighbor, you have to be a fighter as a mother. You have to fight every power that wants to take down your children. 
Fight every power that wants to assassinate your children. Let me tell you something. Jockey bed put Moses on the river and put somebody to watch that even when Pharaoh's daughter saw Moses and they brought him to her, the Bible says that they said, can I get somebody to nurture this child? And imagine Moses' mother, Jockey bed, was being paid to take care of her own child. Mothers are always acting wisdom. Do you think this woman was wise? She was wise. Don't just place your child there and don't care what happens to them. Always check. The Bible says she told the sister, you watch the basket. Watch the basket. So even when Pharaoh's daughter, they took, took the basket out and she knew where Moses was. Some mothers, you don't even know where your children are. When did you last call them? That is not the true art of motherhood. Oh, she's the one supposed to look for me. No, 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 no. Where is that written in the Bible? You're there waiting, waiting for your children to contact you. That is not the true art of a mother. A true mother looks out for them that he bore or she bore. Hallelujah. A true mother will look out for her children. You don't wait for them to call you. You call them. If, if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if your children in, are in Africa, don't wait for them to WhatsApp you just because you bought them phones. Yeah, call them and say, hello, Caroline. How are you doing? How is school? Don't just forget about them because you left the grandmama to take care of them. Hello? Hello? A good mother watches out for her children. Jockey bed watched out for Moses even when she, he was on the river Nile. So let's go back to Judges 1. Judges, Judges chapter 4. Judges chapter 4. I want us to start from verse um, yes, verse 4. And Deborah, a prophetess, a wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at the time. Can we continue? And she dwelt under a palm tree, Deborah, between Ramah and Beth in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. Let's continue. And she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abion, out of the Kadesh Neptali and said unto him, Has that not the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded? Saying, Go and draw towards Tabar and take with thee a thousand men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun. And I will draw unto thee to the river of Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thy hand. Continue. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou shalt not go with me, I will not go. So going back to the story of, Je of Deborah, she was the mother of Israel. As you read Judges 5-7, everybody, Judges 5-7. Things happened in Israel, but until Deborah arose as a mother. The inhabitants of the village ceased, and they ceased in Israel. Until Deborah arose, I arose a mother in Israel. So Israel was a great nation, but without motherhood, a lot of things went amiss. Hallelujah. But when Deborah came on scene and mothered the nation, there are some people, God has told you certain things, like we just read in Judges 4, that the God had already spoken to Barak to go to Kadesh and fight Sisera. And even God had promised Barak victory in the battle. But let me tell you something, Barak did not go. Why? He was afraid. But when the mother came into contact with Barak, hallelujah, when, when Barak came into contact with Deborah, he said, if Deborah you go, let me tell you something, some mothers, you are powerful and your, your, your children need your umbrella to confront certain things. So Barak said, I am not going except if you go with me. But Deborah says, okay, I'll go with you, but the glory of this battle shall not be to a man, but to a woman. Now, never despise the power of a woman. Some women carry men even into destiny. Barak was a man. He was no longer a boy. But he could not confront Sisera without Deborah. There are things that your children cannot confront without your mothers. They may look like they have a six-pack. They may look like they got a muscle. But there are some principalities they cannot take down without the covering of their mother. So that is why you see that Barak says, Deborah, go with me. 
Why? Because Deborah, she was a prophetess. She was a mother. She was anointed. She had a covering. And let me tell you something. Deborah helped Barak to confront Sisera. And surely just like Deborah says that the glory shall go to a woman and not a man. It was Jael who killed Sisera and not a man. And the glory indeed went to a woman. So mothers, don't undermine yourselves. Tell every mother, don't undermine yourself. Don't look down on yourself. Don't say my son is 30. Don't say my son is 40. And she, he doesn't need me. Oh, he, need, she st he still needs you. There are some enemies that they cannot take down until they are under your cover. There are some children, God has told them, start a business. But they are saying, daddy, mommy, if you don't do it with me, I'm not going to do it. I'm scared. God had spoken to Barak to go. And even told him where exactly to go. Some of your children, God has already told them where to go. But they are already, they, they are still afraid. But with your support, tell your neighbor, with your, with your support, they can make it. When Deborah supported Barak in what God had called him to do, they got the victory. Hallelujah. So mothers, your children need your support. They need your guidance. Mothers are torchbearers. That's the true art of motherhood. Mothers are torchbearers. Mothers guide their children into victory and into destiny. So you see Deborah led Israel back into the presence of God and into destiny and also into victory. May you lead your children to destiny and to victory. There is a common error that many mothers commit. I'm going to talk about it as I'm getting out of your way. Which is not a correct act of motherhood. Maybe in the Bible, Abraham and his servant, they chose for Isaac who to marry. Hallelujah. But sometimes let your children listen to who they should marry. It's not your responsibility to fight your, 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 your daughters-in-law. Get the art of motherhood. Even that daughter-in-law is, is your daughter. Whether you like the, the girl your, your son has brought or you don't like them, she is also your daughter. Treat her like somebody's child. Value her. She never came to destroy the family. She came to add value. Somebody say, I came to add value. I came to add value. If she doesn't marry that young man, hello. And you know, some of you mothers, you know the weaknesses of your sons and you're just stubborn. You know your son is not clean. Hello? You know your son is not even organized. You know your son doesn't even have enough money. You know even he, she, he doesn't probably have a good job. Hallelujah. And somebody's child risks their lives and they walk down the aisle. With this young man who looks like he's going nowhere. Mothers, you need to respect such a girl. You need to celebrate the goodness of God and say, my son has found love. Because somebody chose not to see the mistakes and the errors of your son and they focused on his strength. Hello? Some people see far. Some people see very far. And some ladies or some girls, they see better than some mothers. There are many mothers who don't see value in their sons, but there are some girls, they are sharp enough to say this one is going somewhere. They have the eye to identify that this one he may not be able to talk now, but the oil of the Holy Ghost will fall upon him and he will become a preacher and he will become a, a, he will become a jailhouse wrecker. He shall pull down principalities. But let me tell you something. Don't fight daughters-in-law. A good mother should not fight a daughter-in-law. A good mother should not compete with a daughter-in-law. I want you to know that even if you have seven boys, one day they are going to find the love of their lives. Thank God for your breast when it was available. But when they grow up, God is not expecting them to feed from the same breast. It is written in the book of Proverbs and also in the book of Genesis all over the Bible. A man shall leave his father and his mother. So a good mother, start preparing. A time is whether you like it, whether you don't like it. Whether you are ready or you're not ready. One day your son is going to leave your house. Look at Vernon looking at the mother. He's peeping. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's peeping at the mom. Don't worry, I'm doing the job. I'm preparing her. 
So maybe some mothers, they never prepared you. Let me get the, I'm being given the privilege and the honor to prepare you. So that you don't make the errors that many mothers have made. Hallelujah. Your son's wife, they never came to be a narrow. She came to be a blessing as well. She came to add value to the family. Don't fight. And also know that you know what? Now he is my son, but if he's married with a ring, hallelujah, tell your neighbor hallelujah. If the wife wants him to wear a coat, don't say you should wear a sweater. Because you used to be his next of kin, but now things have changed. She is the next of kin. If she says, Ma, sir, put on a jacket, don't say, ah, 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 my son wear a sweater. It's not a competition. Let me prepare every mother. Anybody with a son? I'm one of them. Yeah. And you know, if you call and they, they you know, a time is going to come, you mothers. And you call your son and call him and say, no, I'm, I'm speaking to honey. I'll call you back mommy. <laughs> Don't take it out on the girl. She is innocent. They are simply in love. How come he doesn't call me, but he's calling this girl. The girl is taking up her time. Let me tell you, we have all been young at one time. We have all been young at one time. And we acted like young people. We, did, we spoke like young people. We acted like young people. Let them be. Tell your neighbor, let them be. And don't need to be jealousy. And there's no need for fighting. It is what it is. Life has happened. There is no charm. There is no spell here. Life has happened. Violet, prepare ya. Hello? That is why parents spend as much time with your children as you can. Because they grow up so fast. Can you believe Michelle is 14? I'm a mother of a teenager. Do I look like a mother of a teenager? Jesus. So treasure every moment. <laughs> treasure every moment. So good mothers, they support children. They don't. Let me tell you something. A good mother will support their child into the marital destiny, but a bad mother will want to pull him out. A bad mother would want your child to move from girl to girl to girl to girl. Eh? Evangelize the whole village in the negative way. That's not a good mother. That is not a good mother. A good mother, when your, girl, you, when your son finds a girl, a fine young girl, a godly girl, full of the Holy Ghost, except if you're full of demons. The girl is full of the Holy Ghost, number one. That is treasure number one. To me, that is the ice cream on the cake. Or the icing on the cake. Praise the name of the living God. Uh, but don't like you're drunk with the Holy Ghost to come for my son. Mm -mm. I have a spiritual eye, oh. I discern. Oh. Hallelujah. I will see you. Praise the Lord. Because there are some sisters in the church, they speak in tongues so people can think they are spiritual. So if you're going to take the sister because she's speaking in tongues so much in the church at home, she may be another thing. Praise the name of the living God. So, children of God, a good mother also ushers their children into marriage. They usher their children into they don't hold on to them. You know, Edgy is saying you should be married with two kids. The mother is saying, no, 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 you stay here and pay up some bills with me. Help me to pay the mortgage. You're failing in your God-given assignment. As you're doing, being manipulative as a, as a mother, you're failing in your God-given assignment. Because your assignment, you should carry that child into destiny and bank that child into destiny. The moment you do that, your crown grows bigger in heaven. But you know, God is moving the children forward. You're pulling them behind. You're pulling them behind. You say, this, this is what should be happening. No, 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 no. And you use scriptures. The Bible says, obey your father and your mother. This is the promise. 
Hallelujah. And but, but you know the Bible is very smart. It says obey your parents in the Lord. So what if you're born again and your parent is telling you you have to sacrifice to the idols of my father's house? Will you do it? Will you obey? He's telling you to undress and you run at night. Would you obey? He's telling you to go and sell your body so you people can get a mansion. Would you do it? So a good mother carries their children into destiny. As we all rise to our feet, let's pray our children into destiny. And also a good mother repents on behalf of her children. She sanctifies herself on behalf of the children. Job always asked for forgiveness and sacrificed on behalf of his children. So some of these biblical concepts you should you should be able to put them into practice. Why? Because they will help you to win the battles of motherhood. Hallelujah. They will help you to win the battles of motherhood. Motherhood is a battle, but you will win the battle because God trusted you with it. Tell your neighbor, God trusted you. Why did God trust you above all the other women? Because he saw you were the best candidate to usher that man, that boy, that girl into destiny. Praise the name of the living God. Everybody lift up prayer in this house. Hello viewers, I hope you enjoyed the program Sp Spiritual Surrogacy versus Motherhood. I hope you now can make a difference. Just because you had a child doesn't make you a mother. It's when you nurture the child that you are brought forth. May the good Lord give you the grace to be the best mother in this generation. God richly bless you. Thank you for watching the era of the word revolution.